excited to be a part of this project. I am very passionate about health disparities in all communities and addressing it head on. Statistics show our community, people of color, are being impacted by COVID-19 at alarming rates. We've been in the trenches just asking questions. We've been dealing with surveys. We've talked to people raw and real in group discussions about some of the things they want to hear from our experts. And here's some samples of some of the things that they'd like to ask. The number one thing that I want to know about the coronavirus as it stands right now are what are the newest symptoms? You know, it's such a new thing that's happening to us and every day I'm seeing new symptoms that are popping up. Hi, my name is Marilyn Burns and uh, I'm from the Woodhill Woodland area and my question is to the doctors is how can we as residents in the community neighborhood try to level the playing field to, what can we do to to put out here to keep ourselves safe if we can't even seek out the medical attention that we so desperately need my name is robin brown and i would like to know what symptoms do younger folks get what is the statistics of the effects on younger people as well as our children because they're not given those statistics. Um, lots of questions still coming in about testing and where, you know, where COVID-19 originated from. I want to get to a couple of questions before we move on to our next topic. And uh, we will later have our panel try and answer as many of those questions as possible. Um, let's see, we have one here uh, about Deborah. She's asking, uh, why are the testing results taking so long? She said she took her test April 28th and has still not gotten her results back. Someone else asking about timing. Uh, Skylar asked, how long is this all gonna last? Like how long will this continue? I think the COVID-19, this virus will be with us and affecting our lives until we have a vaccine or an effective treatment. And I've always been an optimist and I hope we have a vaccine you know, by the end of the year. I hope we you know, might have a treatment breakthrough. There's tremendous research and interest in both vaccines and treatments around the world. But until we either have an effective treatment or a vaccine, which probably certainly earliest would be late fall, um, we're, we're gonna be dealing with this. And, and that comes to another question. There was one quickly about mobile testing. Um, I'm not sure about that, Dr. Harwell. That could be something in the future. And then just wrap up some of your thoughts. Yeah, I would hope that mobile testing is something that becomes available. And, you know, in terms of closing thoughts for me, you know, I just want to say, you know, we need to take this a little more seriously than we are. You know, we need to wear our masks. We need to social distance. You know, I don't, I just don't know what it'll take you know, will it take someone in your inner circle to come down with this and, and have a bad outcome before you really realize the gravity of not, you know, following these recommendations? You know, as black people, we're dying from this disproportionately. We already suffer from things that, you know, are festered in structural racism and, and health and healthcare disparities that already existed before this pandemic. And, you know, this COVID-19 is just one more thing that, you know, seems to be bringing, you know, our people down. So please stay safe, social distance, wear your mask and think about others. Professor Reed, what are your thoughts? What one thing do you want us to hit home? Uh, to understand as several people have said on the clips, that this uh, pandemic is affecting people tremendously, uh, psychologically as well as physically. And so this is not a time to uh, have frayed social networks. 
We now need to keep in touch with each other more because that is what has enabled many people to weather the storms of psychological problems. And now we need to reach out to one another to help do that. Yes, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Professor uh, Warney Reed, Dr. Carla Harwell, and of course, Dr. Keith Armitage, an infectious specialist, medicine specialist from UH. We so appreciate all that you've contributed today. You know, throughout this journey, um, I call it a journey because putting this together was very emotional for many of us because as I said at the beginning, we are dealing with this every single day. People that we love and care about are leaving us. But one thing I can say is there are people fighting back and they are having an impact in their community. Let's watch. Better day. And others are hoping for better days. Community leaders are using their platforms to make a difference, like radio host Jeff Brown and community activist Yvonne Pointer. They're feeding first responders, including those at the Second District Police Department. Yeah, we got COVID-19, but guess what? We still got people on the front line. We still got people working. We still got people that are sacrificing their lives for us. So why not? We've been blessed to feed over 2,000 people, frontline workers, off the donations of, of the people in the community that believe in Hope Haven, that believe in the Jeff Brown Show. It really, really helps us out a lot. They took time to say a prayer, and a bunch of people, different people spoke, and they gave different um, ideas on how they felt about the police and everything, and you just don't hear that. We have our masks, we have our gloves, we're social distancing. You don't have to stay shut up in the house, fearful to live. You can rise up even in this time. So we're wanting people to know that yes, we're all suffering. Yes, we're going through. But if we get out and help someone else, service can save your life. And Billy Sharp of the Urban League Guild says for true leaders, the work never stops. We've been all day, we've had a whirlwind. We did a food bank earlier today, trying to make sure people got food. We uh, gave laptops to CMSD students. We're also, too, pr pushing the 2020 census because we know that's important still. Even, even though we're dealing with COVID-19, we know some things are still important and have to happen. And together, we're gonna fight COVID-19. And in the midst of a crisis, I found out in this group discussion that when we come together, we find creative ways to help one another, like making masks and distributing them throughout the community. I'm doing so many, I'm cutting, I'm washing, I'm doing, then the next person might be sewing, then the next person might be putting the hook things on, trying to get them out to the community, see who's doing what. I'd like to make a commitment between all of us, we'd have a thousand masks by the end of June. You think we can? I know we can. Come on. We can. I know we can. A thousand masks by the end of June. All right? Good. You heard it first here. One thousand mask challenge. We want to make sure that we share resources with you, 800 numbers, and other information on our Facebook page. So we want you to go back and on the Corona, Coronavirus Urban Report Facebook page and we'll be putting more information out there for you. And of course, thank you for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay informed. Best wishes, bye-bye.